Born to be wild. Born to be wild, born to be free. Were you? Uh, and if I asked the reverse, do you want to be tame and do you want to be contained? Do you want somebody to be controlling you? Uh, I certainly know that my answer to that is I want to be free. And I'm, it's not for me about being wild, but I want to be able to live my life and express myself in my way. How about you? So here's a great question. Do you ever do anything based on what other people will think or not do something based on what other people will think? So I'm not going to wear that, I'm not going to say that, I'm not going to do that because people might not like me or I might not fit in with the crowd. I'm very privileged that at a very young age, my father who uh, lived in what I would consider the least free place ever, my father was in Auschwitz concentration camp for nearly two years uh, and he survived. And when he got out of there and was a refugee and came to Australia, one of the things that he hammered and drummed into me daily, I think, was my right or our right to be free. He said, we've brought you to Australia. Uh, you are, you're going to grow up in a free country, a country with democracy. People have died for your freedom. You really need to appreciate that and live your life as a free person. So one of the perplexing things for me, particularly as an exercise coach, as a personal results coach, and having managed health clubs all over the world, uh, it really, uh, again, I'll use the word, perplexes me why people want somebody else to control their food, to control their exercise, and they do stuff controlled by what other people think. So there's three parts there, and I want to cover them uh, as, an, as interesting questions. What do you like to eat? What don't you like to eat? And why would you let somebody else tell you not to eat the things that you love and that you have to eat things that you don't love? That's somebody else controlling you. Why would you do that? And I could, I could never understand that. And I've been a personal exercise coach all of my life and I would find it disrespectful and rude, irresponsible to tell somebody that they can't have the foods that they love and they have to eat these foods that they don't love because I don't want anybody telling me what to do. I want to be free. It's a bit like somebody telling you what to wear. Uh, and I, I went to a, a private boarding school where there was a very strict dress code. And you have to, when you go somewhere and there's a very strict dress code, obviously it's respectful to dress that way. But I always ask, what is your style? Who are you? And are you reflecting that through what you wear versus are you following the fashion? Are you being told by other people in Milan or Paris or London that this is the way you should dress this season. There's an interesting expression when it comes to clothes. Oh, that's just so last season. Well, how about it looks good on me, it fits me, it makes me feel good. Isn't that what you should wear, not what everybody else is wearing? Are you wearing that, the clothes that reflect who you are, not fitting in with the crowd or being part of the fashion? And I love that quote. Uh, fashion is designed to go out of style, but style never goes out of fashion. And I've always aimed to live my life like that. And it seems that eating, for example, diets have a lot of fashion attached to them. Oh, I'm doing this particular diet. And I could name them in my lifetime of 40 plus years as a personal exercise coach. There's been hundreds, if not thousands of different kinds of diets. And some people wear them like a label. It's like, I'm on this diet or I'm on that diet. And I ask, well, who is that person? That's based on a person's opinion. How about how does your body work, anatomy, physiology? What do you like to eat? What don't, like to, what don't you like to eat? Do you eat when you're hungry? Do you stop eating when you're full? Why do you eat? There's a whole heap of reasons attached there that don't have anything to do with somebody else telling you what to eat. And exercise is the same. If you wanna be fit and strong, the beautiful thing is that your heart, lungs, muscles, bones, immune system, central nervous system, all blind, all can't count. So it doesn't matter how you get puffed. And it doesn't matter how you, or what you do to overload your muscles and bones. If you get puffed, you'll get fit. And if you overload your muscles and bones, you'll get strong. So anything past that, somebody telling you you should run or you should lift dumbbells or kettlebells or you should do uh, this particular class, what if you don't like it? What if it doesn't suit your free mind? Freedom. People have died for our freedom and yet there's so many people now who say, please tell me what to eat and please tell me how to exercise and they rely on the fashionistas to say, tell me what to wear. We've now got this phenomenon called a social media influencer. They're called an influencer for a reason because they influence the way people eat, the way they exercise and the way they dress and what they buy. 
why would you want to be influenced by somebody else? Don't you want to think for yourself and be free? That's how I've lived my life, so that's why I'm asking so passionately. I find it really sad when people eat foods that they don't like and exercise in a way that doesn't suit them and wear clothes that don't suit them just because that's what everybody else is doing. And then there's that really interesting one. Are we doing it because that's what everybody else is doing and we want to be accepted? Why would you want to be like everybody else? There's this beautiful word, uh, it makes me feel, it melts my heart. It's the word unique. Unique simply means in my definition, and you might have your own, is nobody else is doing it. And that makes you stand out from the crowd, it makes you memorable, it makes you different from everybody else. Why would you want to be the same as everybody else just to be accepted by the same? And if you're a leader, if you're a coach, if you're a pastor, if you're a boss, if you're a parent, if you're a teacher, don't we want to teach our kids to think for themselves, not follow the crowd? Don't we want to teach our kids to question everything, not believe everything? Don't we want our kids to love their food and love their exercise and, and, and wear clothes that express who they are, not try and impress other people? And it seems that a lot of those things are based on impressing other people or fitting in with the crowd. Uh, it's, it, it, this social media ph phenomenon now means that if everybody's doing it, then maybe I should be doing it too. And that's one of those really bizarre quotes, and I'm, I, I'm very glad I heard it very early on in my life. 50 million people doing a dumb thing doesn't mean it's not a dumb thing. Just because that social media influencer has 50 million followers doesn't mean that what they're doing is the right thing. It just means there's a lot of people doing the dumb thing. Now, it might not be dumb, but as I always ask, wouldn't it be nice to be able to figure it out for yourself rather than that person's got 50 million followers, so they must be right. How about let's listen to what they're saying? What do they believe in? What are their core values? What do they stand for? What would they die for? A lot of social media influencers, everything is about how much money you pay me to influence people to buy this product. Not what do I stand for, what do I believe in, and what would I die for? And that's what I'm asking very personally, as I always do, this is my begging position. I want our kids to grow up in a world, our future adults, to live in a world where they think for themselves. How about you? Not be told what to do. Not live their life under somebody else's rules and regulations and do what everybody else tells you to do. Now, I'm very respectful, and I'll share that again. When I went to private boarding school, there was a very strict dress code and I dressed that way. I was very proud of my school uniform because I was very proud to be going to that school and I wore my uniform uh, beautifully. I'm very proud of that. And I didn't wear my uniform because I wanted to be accepted by other people. In fact, it was the opposite. I was often bullied for wearing my uniform so beautifully. Who do you think you are with your perfect shiny shoes and your, and your perfectly ironed clothes? I just wanted to be, to be I went to that school because I was proud to go to that school and I wanted to be representative of the school that I went to. And that's how I've lived my life, representative of the person that I am. So that's why I don't get affected by diets, by crazy exercise programs, by the fashion, and I certainly don't care what other people think. So they're my four questions for today. Romax, which is all about healthy, fit and strong, have a career or business that you love, be financially free and have great people in your life. If that's how you want to live your life, then please, this question, are you eating the foods that you love and not eating the foods that you don't love and why would you live any, any other way? Are you exercising in a way that suits you, not the way somebody else tells you to exercise? All you've got to do is get puffed, lift heavy and you'll be fit and strong. Do you have a career or business that you love? Do you love it? Not because that's what somebody told you you should do, not because that's what your high school marks told you you should, you should have, do you have a career or business that you are passionate about and you wake up every day loving what you do? And if not, why not? And if you care what other people think, is it possible that they care about what you think and they might be living their life to suit you? And that's, isn't that ridiculous? Wouldn't we want everybody to live their life in a way that they, are, that they can respect themselves be proud of themselves and be really happy, not worried about, oh, should I wear this because what will people think? Or should I say this because what will people think? And we live in a world where, oh, I'm gonna share this again, because again, I, I was brought up with this every day. People died for our right to free speech. People died for our right to live freely. And yet we seem so interested in being contained in a box, being told what to do, being controlled. 
I ask lots of questions for a reason. I don't, I'm not disrespectful, I just ask lots of questions. Why would I do that? How does it work? I don't want to live my life being controlled by somebody else. How about you? I want to be wild, I want to be free. <laughs> People ask me, Rowie, how come you've got so many wild animals? I've got a, a, a huge collection of wild animals. And that's to remind me every day that being free is far more important than being safe. It's very easy to, to cover yourself over, not do anything risky and live your life in a safe space. But what a way to live. I don't want to live my life like that. And I always share this story. Uh, it's, one, it's one that it really affected my life. It was one of the first uh, Formula One Grand Prix in Australia. And unfortunately, there was a flag marshal at that uh, Formula One race that died at the race. A tire came off one of the Formula One cars and hit him and he died. And obviously it was covered by the press because one of the first Formula One races in Australia. And the, at the funeral, the gentleman's wife was interviewed. And yes, she was sad that she'd lost her husband, but there was a almost a, a glow about her. And she said it so beautifully. And I remember I wasn't that old and I looked at that and went, that's how I want to live my life. She said, my husband died doing what he loved. And wouldn't it be better to die doing what you love at a young age than live 150 years being miserable, trying to fit in with the crowd, trying to suit everybody else, doing what other people want you to do? You live a long time, but what a way to live. I don't want to live like that. Uh, there's a lot of people that have died early. And when I look at what, they, what they've done in their life, they might have died in a plane crash or they died doing their sport or they died uh, doing something risky. And I always look at that and say, far better to die like that than die in a retirement village with tubes in your nose and can't remember who you are and being treated like a baby. I, that To me, that's a horrible way to end your life. I would like to live passionately, excitedly, enthusiastically, and then die peacefully in my sleep. So I want to live wild and free and then die peacefully in my sleep. Barring accident, and accidents, one of those cool things that happen if you are putting yourself out there. Uh, I'll rephrase that though. You could die in a house fire, you could die, the people die with vending machines falling on them. Like life is risky. So if life is already risky, why not get out there and enjoy it every single day? Eat what you love, don't eat what you don't like, exercise the way you wanna, wanna exercise so you can be fit and strong and enjoy your life. Uh, wear the clothes that you want to wear and don't worry about what other people think. Why does it matter what other people think? What's important is that you love who you are and you respect who you are. And when you look in your mirror at the end of your day, you can say, super duper do, how are you? I've had an amazing day today because I love my life. Born to be wild.